and welcome to another edition of Trader Talk TV. Today I'm with Drew Stein from Audigent in the office here. Drew's coming to talk about probably the hottest topic in ad tech right now, curation. So Drew, how are you doing? Excited to be here and excited to talk about curation as well. Before we jump into it, yeah. I want, can you just tell us a little bit about Audigent and the sure. sort of origins and you know what the company does? Sure. I, Audigent, we started off life as what we thought was going to be a 2.0 DMP. There, there was no word for what we did at the time. Curation didn't exist. It, it really wasn't uh, e even uh, you know, a word in the vernacular of the ecosystem. And so we would call ourselves a, a next gen or 2.0 DMP. We were mm. off to the races and um, we were aggregating data, we were cleaning data, we were excited to build the highest performing taxonomy. And then we did what DMPs do, right? You hunt your data off into a data marketplace mm -hmm. um, or uh, directly into a DSP. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you'd wait, you'd have to wait 30 days or 45 days or 60 days and then you'd finally get a report and it would be one line, it would have spend. And then we just kind of took a step back and we said, God, th this kind of sucks. <laughs> and then we, we, we said, how is it in an ecosystem where all the DSPs, the buy side have real-time data and the SSPs, they have real-time data. How do the data people have no real-time data? I mean, we're the ones supposedly providing liquidity around addressability. We're the ones that are, are helping the DSPs to, to address open exchange inventory. And yet we had no way of optimizing. We had no way of being part of the real-time conversation. And that's when we took a step back and we said, wait a second. And we went first to, uh, it was Pubmatic and Xander at the time. Yeah. And we said, what if we put our data through the supply path? What if we packaged it together with mm. the inventory? And sure enough, they both had alphas and internal tools that they were using at the time uh, that we were able to join. And the rest was history. And before yeah. you know it, we now identify not as a, a DMP, which we still have a great DMP stack. We certainly do all of the things that uh, a uh, a 2.0 or next gen DMP does, but we identify as a you know one of the leading curation companies in the business. And here we are today talking about curation. Today. So good, play, good, play, good segue into a, into the next kind of bit of conversation. Curation, right? Yeah. It's hot. Everybody's talking about it. It's been around for a while. But what is it, Drew? What is curation, and why is it so important? Well, high level, I'll, I'll give you a definition. Then maybe the best thing yes, you can do absolutely. is visualize it. Absolutely. Um, but curation is the application of data through the supply path at, at its highest level, right? That is the kind of the big difference of what curation is or, or what curation means to the marketplace. Definitively, there is an old way and a new way. Mm -hmm. So the best thing we could do is visualize it. There's an old way and there's a new way. Let's take a look. The old way, I'm gonna call this DMP. Yeah. And there's a new way. We're gonna call this curation. In the old way, right, you had a data company. Yeah. Right, or it could it be a, a DMP, right, would give data to a DSP, yeah, and the DSP would then go to an SSP mm -hmm. and exchange data with the SSP, and then all of the kind of Pub One, Pub Two, right? Pub yeah, Three, yeah, aggregated supply, right? So this is the way that the data is applied to the buy side as a DMP segment. And sometimes this could be a data marketplace also. It could be the data marketplace that lives within the DSP. It could be a data marketplace that, that lives within the data company and goes to multiple DSPs. But ultimately, data is applied through the buy side and then addressed to the sell side. That's the old way. Mm -hmm. This still exists, but we'll get into some of the challenges later yeah. after we diagram yeah. it of what's changing within this ecosystem yeah. and changing around addressability and the actionability of the old way, yeah. which is dying. Right. So now the new way. You still have, of course, the DSP and you still have an SSP. Yeah. 
But instead, the data company has shifted from the buy side to the sell side. So now the data company sits over here and gets packaged at the SSP level, right? You still have the pubs here, pub one, pub two, pub three. But what goes back now is a deal ID from here. And sometimes an entire curated exchange or curated marketplace, those words are typically interchangeable. Now. Yeah, yeah. So the big shift here is data from the buy side to the sell side. And curation is the application of data through the supply path, through the sell side, packaged data and inventory together and delivered back to the DSP. Right. Interesting. So, so, th so this is a fundamental shift. Fundamental shift. In sort of application of data in sort of deal IDs and PMPs. Yeah. Old way was to deliver data through a DMP segment. The new way is to deliver it through a PMP, a, yeah. what we call a smart PMP, or yeah. data enriched inventory. Yeah. And the relationship with curation then is that these data companies work with the sort of activation layer on the, on the sell side. Correct. And then that deal ID is loaded into a DSP, which yes. then is activated. So there's a lot right. of moving parts there, basically. Well, the core relationship of the DSP and the SSP remains the same, right? But where the data gets applied and where it gets optimized changes. And mm. there's some huge advantages. When we think about why this works and why this is future-proof and why this is ushering in a new era of data, for the ecosystem, there's huge advantages versus the old. Okay, let's so, let, let's yeah. stick in that. I, yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Uh, why is this a challenge? Uh, yeah. The old way and the new way, because I, I find that this is an interesting sort of like yep. dynamic you've had here. But like, that old way is challenged in what way? Okay. What, what, well, what, why is it? Why is it, first, is it, it, it a goner effectively? Well, first, it can't be future proofed in the same way the curation side can. So. Call this 70 to 80 percent of the data that flows from the a DMP or, or traditional data company into a DSP is cookie based, mm, which or are other what I'll call legacy identifiers, which right? are which are in the in the exit lounge effectively. This, people. remember that, right? That's going away. That's, Soon, that's a challenge. Yeah. The second is no real time data. Remember the first aha moment we had as a company was the moment we said, oh, this kind of sucks being over here, was when we weren't getting any kind of real-time feedback. Mm. There's no real-time feedback here. So we have, once you ship a DMP segment as a data company, you're completely in the dark. You don't know whether you're providing value, you don't know whether or not you're driving performance towards KPIs, and if there's no real-time feedback, there's no real-time optimization, right? So no optimization. The third thing is, there's no, like we're a data company. We have data scientists. We're in the business of providing value to brands and media agencies through data and analytics. And yet there's no log level data, no log level data. There's no feedback even on a granular level for us to take all of that information in. So not only do we have no real-time data, even after the campaign is over, there's no log level data for us to ingest on this side and say, oh, here are the value-added data science and insights, reporting, attribution analytics that we could provide back to a partner, which is valuable, right? Data companies don't get to be data companies on this side. We only get to be data companies in the sense that we ingest data, maybe we clean it, maybe we create taxonomy. But what we can't do is post-campaign any kind of value-added insight into why our data did or didn't perform. Mm. So no log-level data means no data science. Okay. Right? And no value-added insights or reporting or critically, attribution, which is a really hot topic here. So there's a big X here. The, the other part of this, which 
kind of sucks is it's CPM pricing. That is static. It's one size fits all. That is bad for the buyer, right? Let's say it's, you're buying a $1.50 segment and it's 3 a.m. in the morning and your price of display drops to $1.50. You are packaged and out the door for $3. The new way has dynamic pricing. It's a percentage of media. Mm. There's a, it is massively more advantageous to price as a, percent, a dynamic percentage of media as a margin versus a static CPM. In a static CPM, the media agency and the buyer are the loser there. So it's mm. more, so static CPM means it's more expensive. And so there's a big cost difference for the buyers there. So you're and, not really selling this to me, Drew, at all. I can only... <laughs> so it, it's more expensive. <laughs> I mean, so, like so it's no based. transparency, no targeting, no transparency <laughs> price. That this is not a, no, right. a, a like you know no optimization. Right. Well, that's why we took a step back and said something's got to change. This, yeah. this makes no sense for right. a data company to not. All right. Have well, fl it. let's flip it to the yeah, curation so let's, side. So let's, uh, why? Why? Yeah. Why is this new way? Better. Okay, one, I mean, we can go side by side. This old way relies on what I'll call the old network of data distribution. Mm -hmm. Which is busted. Which is busted and, uh, and matching tables. Mm. Which is, again, flawed. Right, and this flawed has privacy implications. And this part of the world, that's a very serious thing, right? Right? Mm. All of a sudden, you move to this side, and you can have the integration here can be real time. No matching tables. And privacy safe. If you're not distributing data, right? Right there, you want to talk about a huge boost to privacy. You get the well called a privacy boost of real time data integration. So instead of hosting matching tables, instead of having to ship all of your data everywhere, all of a sudden on the sell side, you can have a real time data integration, which allows data companies to covet their data, to keep it close, and not have to fan it out across all of the ecosystem. Right. Part of the challenge, I think, of the ecosystem and building a better future that's more consumer friendly is we've got to stop shipping the data everywhere, right? But the more places you ship data, the more data leakage that's out there potentially around PII. Because you're only basically, the deal, deal ID is between the DSP and SSP. You're not like broadcasting it out to everyone. You don't basic. have to broadcast you don't have to put it. In, you don't have to put it in the bid stream well, or, or... This way, everything gets broadcasted into the bid yeah. stream. This way, it's real time. Nothing has to get broadcast into yeah. the bid stream. Yeah. So the second thing here is dynamic pricing. Dynamic pricing, mm -hmm. which is which is just frankly cheaper for the buyers, right? So all of a sudden, we've gone from static CPM based pricing to dynamic percentage of media, and the winner here is the media buyer and the agency. Mm -hmm. Most clients that we see are saving between 80 and 100% of their old data cost when they're transacting on the exact same segments mm. through the, the sell side. All right. The next advantage that you have here is real-time optimization. Zero optimization versus real-time optimization. So How so? So what we get back here, no feedback loop here, we get Real-time data here, and we get real-time data here. So all of a sudden, this is, this is here, we get no feedback. Here, all of a sudden, we can get real-time data back from the DSP about the campaign performance mm, mm. and how we're hitting different KPIs. And here, we understand what I'll call deal health analytics. We understand how the plumbing is working, how the data is moving through, how the deal is scaling, mm -hmm. how the uh, ad formats are working across display or CTV or any, you know, OLV. And we're able to, here to make optimizations. So 
Um, Real-time optimization drives better performance. When, when you, if, if you look at something that already is cheaper, and now all of a sudden you can optimize it, you have a huge advantage of that. Hmm. The next thing is we can be a data company again. Mm -hmm. Log level data means value added data science. Yeah. And we have zero capability, no log level data, no granular impression level data on the buy side. But when it comes to the sell side, log level data gives us a chance to actually look at attribution, analytics around audiences, and provide insights that we are not capable of when we deliver something as a DMP segment. So dynamic pricing, making it cheaper, real-time optimization, log level data, but most importantly, future proof. So are you saying that, and this is just be extrapolation from, from my point of view, that the old system is flawed in many ways because it depended on uh, cookie signals, um, ID signals, which now are going to be extinct because thanks to our friends at Google and various um, you know, privacy initiatives on platforms like Apple. But, and that seems like a defunct system and, it, and, and there's cost involved and there's no transparency and all the rest that comes alongside it. But moving to a curation viewpoint, which is moving the data to the sell side and working with the DSPs that way, you sort of get all the, all the best parts of programmatic and more. And more. I mean, no matching tables means no cookies. And that is huge. Why is there no matching tables? I'm just because it's, it's important to kind of right. so just zero on that one. Yeah, so you, you di distribute data on mm -hmm. a massive quantities of... And you're looking for specific cookies across the You ecosystem. have to host a matching table. And the cost of listening to impressions is huge. The cost of storing data. The cost yeah, of the cost of computing. And again, massive. it even goes back into the sort of like the carbon footprint piece, right? This is less power versus more power. You know? and, and there's also a lot of latency. Yeah. So we are literally co-locating in the same data centers as our SSP partners. Right. And instead of having to ship them all of this data every day, we literally can have a round trip, 99.999% of the time we're about four milliseconds. So while the, the SSP is in the initial stages of evaluating that ORTB request, right, they can simultaneously ping us, ping our servers, literally side by side in the same data centers as their servers, and we can, within four milliseconds, return back, it could be any number of signals mm -hmm. around. It could be audience data. If there's a deterministic identifier, it could be there. You can deliver back contextual data. Mm. You can deliver back cognitive or what we call predictive audience mm. data. Mm. The, the amount of data that we can deliver back in that moment has exploded for us in this. Like when we talk about addressability, it, it's, uh, it's really important. The opportunity within real time yeah. to address much larger swaths of data assets yeah. Yeah. and other kinds of data yeah. is only possible through the sell side. Here, every day we have to make a decision because bandwidth is very limited between yeah. data companies and SSPs and, or DSPs. Every day we have to make a decision. What data do we want to ship? Mm. And what winds up happening is we have to ship t maybe 5, 10, 15% of our total data assets and we have to kind of make a decision about what is going to help our you know, publisher partners monetize, yeah. what's going to help our brand partners reach the right audiences. This is, There's no decisioning there. Yeah. We can literally use every kind of data set and the entire depth of our data assets when we have a real-time you know, connection. So this is a great time to talk about where audiences sit in this space. Yeah. So Drew, let's talk about where uh, audiences sit in this because it's interesting sure. to talk about, like so we, we did the the evolution of, what is that, evolution of programmatic really, evolution of programmatic from sort of like, a sort of clunky outdated cookie base, ID base, exclusively like um, demand side base, to something much more sort of fitting for the, the current times, privacy force world, yeah. sell side, proper feedback loops, attribution, all the, all, the, all the bells and whistles. Now let's talk about 
audience, right? The yeah. platform, right? The curation platform, if you yep. will. I know you talked about being a data company, which is fine, but for this instance, I think it's good to kind of yep. label yourself as the curation platform. We are. Where do you sit in this? How does it work, right? So, because you guys work with multiple partners, right? So you work with agencies, you work with ad networks, with sales houses, they activate deals via you, set them yep. up, and then you go. So talk about the workflow, sure. how that lo looks, and then maybe talk about some of the cool stuff you do around you know, integration with some of the data partners you have in the US and some maybe sure. over here as well. Great, so let's start here in the middle. Yeah. We still always have this connection here. There's always gonna be this DSP, and SSP, right? And up here, let's put the media agency. Yeah. And of course, the brand. Now we know that there's plenty of brands that have in-house programmatic teams. Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, for the for the purposes of this, right? You could say the media agency is here. Sometimes the in-house programmatic team looks like that. You have the SSP, and of course, then the SSP has. Publishers and media. Yeah, all the pubs, and content, and of course, there's, there's lots of them, right? And then you have what used to be just the, what I'll call the, the DMP, a traditional DMP mm -hmm. layer here. Mm -hmm. And then we have something that sits about right here. And this is the curation platform. And the curation platform is something that can be integrated with the DMP. You can, you can also look at a CDP here, right? Pubs, content companies are rich with first party data. You also have data codes. Mm -hmm. And they also all go, all of that goes into the curation platform. And then the curation platform works with the SSP here in delivering the deal ID and the media agency and companies like Autogen, which sits here, has a direct relationship with the media agency and brand. One of the things that was critical for us in wanting to be different, and this was something from the start, we didn't want to be a data company that just punted their data off you know, to a, a media agency or brand or in a data marketplace and said, all right, you know, it's up to you now. And if the data did or didn't perform, hey, that's on you. you, you did, your hands-on keyboard team didn't activate it right, you didn't use our data the right way. We wanted to be able to put our money where our mouth was. If we were going to sell it, we were going to be hands-on throughout the entire you know, process. We wanted to be responsible for the performance of our data. Mm. And that was a, a big change. So. Being here is too far away from the media agency and brand. Yeah. And for us, we knew we had to move closer to the brands and the media agency. We wanted to generate our own demand. We believed in the data that we had. We believed in the platform and the technology that we were building. We believed in it so much so that we wanted to build a platform that was going to stick with it throughout yeah. the entire life cycle yeah. of the media buy. So we create, so we have the strategy that comes to us and that could be uh, that can be around audience. It could be around context. We can use the two of those to create what we call cognitive or predictive assets. Um, and so we understand the strategy brief around the brand or the product or at the campaign level. We create that curated marketplace. And instead of open exchange, they're able to buy against a highly scalable curated exchange. And, and, and kind of the big breakthrough that the SSPs made with all of their curation capabilities is the old way when people talked about PMPs five years ago, it was always one-to-one. -one. What's exciting here is curation now is one-to-many. Some of our SSP partners have the capability of packaging 100,000 URLs in a single PMP. So when you think about a proxy, right, for open exchange inventory, and open exchange inventory is, is dying, it's, it's a big challenge right now. If you look at Privacy Sandbox, if you look at 
uh, you know, certainly the deprecation of the cookie, the ability for the DSP to address open exchange inventory is going to be a challenge. Yeah. But curated markets, curated exchange is a big, exciting part of yeah. the future. So just quickly go and trick because yeah. like, uh, you, you, you sit above the SSPs. You have the, the deals are set up in curation, uh, yeah. the curation platform. You work with the media agencies. There's a bunch of data companies that can, can be ingested in there as well. That deal ID is passed to the SSP. The SSP deal ID is then passed to the DSP, and then it's activated that way, and it gives you that sort of holistic, a la carte, programmatic, whether yeah. it's a KPI, a sustainability KPI, or DEI KPI, or some other KPIs. The ability to kind of serve up what I call a la carte programmatic is possible now. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and what gives us the advantage here is that we're also here. Okay. Right? We're here, and not only do pubs have DMPs, but we also work with brands also. Okay. So what gives us, puts us in a very favorable position is we sit from a data side, not only here looking at 1P data, we look also here, we're sitting at the brand level or working with the media agency mm -hmm. on this side, and all of that also comes into. So, so it only, feeds into the main platform in the middle. Yeah. So okay. curation, th th this platform here becomes the blender for data yeah. and inventory. And it allows us to mix and match whatever is going to be in the best interest for the strategy or the specific outcomes mm -hmm. that that media agency or brand is looking for. Okay. It'll, it, we're Switzerland in this, right? So whether- <laughs> Everybody wants to be Switzerland. Everybody wants to be Switzerland. Yeah, tech. We're lucky because we get to be Switzerland. All right, all right. We get to choose the right combination of data sets, yeah. the right combination of SSPs, the yeah. right combination, and, and frankly, the, the right DSPs. And we get to be less of a product vendor and more of a strategic partner in that okay. conversation with the media agency. Well, Drew, that was an excellent run through the curation landscape and the value curation and where you guys sit, because I think people are super interested in, in this space. And I'd be, we should do this again, particularly around sort of future gazing, because yeah. like, there's lots of more stuff we can cover. But that, that was a brilliant run through. I think this might be another landmark, Trader Talk TV, especially around one of the hottest topics in ad tech, which is curation. Drew, thank you for your time today. Thank you. And that was Trader Talk TV, and we will see you next time.